Hello, my name is Trent Walker. Today I'm going to be sharing a, a Burmese Gamawaja manuscript that is a ritual manual for Buddhist ordination from the Royal Ontario Museum. This particular manuscript is an extraordinary example of this manuscript format in Burma that was produced between the end of the 18th century through the middle of the 20th century for the set of texts used for monastic ordination and other key monastic rituals conducted in Pali, the sacred language of Theravada Buddhism in mainland Southeast Asia. And Kamawaja here means uh, words for ritual. That is the script that is recited for these particular rituals. And the text in black here is uh, that uh, particular set of words that are recited. In this case, a literal script of who is supposed to say what, when, or do what, when in the ritual. Part of the reason that this particular style of manuscript is so extraordinary is that even though it has the format and dimensions and the way it's stacked together looks like palm leaf manuscripts, the dominant technology of the book in mainland Southeast Asia. This particular example is not made from palm leaf. It's not made from paper. It's not made from other much more commonly uh, used uh, materials, but is actually uh, made from cloth uh, that's been stiffened through successive layers of clay and lacquer and then gilded and elaborately ornamented uh, with red lacquer designs. So here we see on the cover some of those extremely elaborate ornamentations uh, showing particular forms of Burmese decorative art. And then we look at the individual pages of, of the manuscript. This is from the very beginning of, of the text opening with this uh, invocation to the Buddha Namo dasa bhagavato arato samas buddhasa in Pali, meaning homage to him, the blessed one, the worthy one, the rightly self-awakened one, that is homage to the Buddha. And then jumping right into the text of the uh, ordination ceremony for someone uh, who is being ordained as a fully ordained monk or bhikkhu in this Theravada Buddhist context. When we look, though, at the the quality of the script and the, the text here, it reveals something quite important about the materiality of this manuscript. So as I mentioned, the inner core of this manuscript as an object is actually sheets of cloth. We don't know exactly which cloth was used, but according to a 19th century set of reports by uh, Lewis Allen Goss, who is the, whose family is the, the the source of this particular you know, manuscript coming to Canada. He reported in the mid 19th century that manuscripts of this format, the most prestigious uh, versions of them were actually made from discarded uh, lower uh, cloths of the king. And those kinds of silk cloths were very fine kind of silk, but could not be worn again as clothes by anyone of a lesser rank but could be turned and transformed into manuscripts of this type. Also, sometimes the robes of high-ranking monks was used for such purposes as well. And again, a cloth like that, or perhaps a cloth of the king or a high-ranking uh, monk was used in this case uh, that was stiffened through successive layers of clay and lacquer. Then the scribe, um, probably a different craftsman than the person who actually created the leaves here out of cloth, but the scribe would have taken a particular kind of pigment, a powdered pigment, either orpiment, which is a kind of arsenic sulfide or cinnabar, a kind of mercury sulfide pigment. These yellow or red pigments would have been uh, drawn on the, the lacquered leaf, which would have appeared originally all black, um, to be able to draw the outline of the letters. Then in another stage, the whole surface would have been gilded and then as that guild was pressed and wiped away, it would have remained on the places where there was lacquer, but it would have fallen off the places where there was the orpiment or where there was the cinnabar. And that's why we see here this black uh, letters coming out against the uh, gilded gold background. 
then there would have been successive stages where the individual letters are written by the scribe here in this very ornamental script, you know, sometimes described as square script or tamarind seed script, uh, majise script, that is in contrast to the ordinary rounded forms of Burmese script used for writing Pali in Burma. The letters would have been improved and sharpened through that stage, and then a another uh, artisan, the person who created these incredible details in red lacquer, would have gone through the whole manuscript, you know, filling out some of the gaps in between the letters with these uh, designs and also the framing designs on the outside, creating this quite elaborate effect. And it's presumably this secondary. Uh, artist after the scribe who has uh, left this short uh, colophon at the bottom right of this image. So this has been a brief tour through some of the material and textual and ritual considerations for the Kamawaja manuscript in the Royal Ontario Museum. I also encourage you to visit the Hidden Stories digital exhibit that's available at this address to learn more and other objects that have been uh, part of contextualizing the history and the interconnections of books along the Silk Road. Thank you.